us. These guys are going around saying that they're the lost children of Israel when we know that the children of Israel is scattered there in the land of Israel and they're, uh, they're in uh, the, the, the people of, uh, uh, I'm thinking of a group, the Filipinos, they're the Israelites, and then you got uh, Israelites that live in the Himalaya Mountains. You know, that's this, the one guy, the naked prophet, oh, yeah. he did a thing. And I'm looking at he said, we're going to break down the 12 tribes of Israel, right? Man, he ain't come nowhere near. The tw- who the 12, he was all up in the Himalayan mountains. He was in Cambodia. Yeah, that's the tribe of Benjamin. <laughs> I, I mean, I said, this is some, this is some old bullshit, time, man. I remember when that came out, and I, I wanted to go down there. That's an A and E, but you can't find it. I wanted to go down there and confront that guy, spiritually, of course, about this thing. You know? The naked prophet. What the hell? Hey, pull him up, man. Let me see, let me see, let me see what he's been doing with his life. Yeah, the naked prophet. And people yeah, the are complete actually Cambodians, uh, Benjaminites, and the uh, the, uh, you, just the, uh, the people of New- Nepal. That's Gad. Get the hell out of here, man. Get the hell out of here. It says, it says, uh, uh, to nine verse, for from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I beho- behold him. Lo, the people Israel shall, shall dwell alone, and shall be not, and shall not be reckon among the nations. So they're not recognizing this, man. As a matter of fact, they set up certain guys that are, that, that are scholars and Bible historians telling you who the tribes of Israel are, and um, it's, that's, that's BS. It says, uh, 10th verse, how, um, how uh, who can count the dust of Jacob and the number of of the fourth part of Israel. And one of the reasons why Mo, the king of Moab wanted them uh, a curse, because when they came out of Egypt, they were so big that everybody in that region, that area, knew about them. They, they had to be millions of people. Because when you go to Deuteronomy, the second chapter, it said that when they walked on the top of that cliff where Esau was, it said that Esau was afraid of them. Somebody get that and hold that on deck. It says, um, who can count the dust? Y'all got it? Who can count the dust of Jacob and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Meaning if you 25% of Israel, you can't even count them. They're so big that they're among every net. You got Israel, like we said early in the show. You got Israelites. You know how many is- millions of Israelites is living down there in Cam- Cambodia? Well, maybe the dude was right. <laughs> the Cambodians, are the, you might be right, you know? Hey, down there in Cambodia, uh, uh, Mongolia, uh, Russia, uh, China, Japan. And you got this one guy, he was a star baseball player. And you can clearly see he looked like everybody's black uncle from down south, but he had Moabite eyes or Japanese eyes. And this guy was a great baseball star, but you can clearly see the man was dark, but he looked like a black Japanese. Well, he was an Israelite, okay? It says, uh, uh, who can count the dust of Jacob and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Let, let me, this is what he said. This is what Balaam said, because he saw the future of what Israel is going to do and what Israel is going to be. It said, let me die the death of the righteous. So Israel are the righteous, hence the sons, the, the uh, sons of the righteous, or sons of God. It says, "And let my last end be like His." It says, "At the end of this deal, I hope that I can wake up and be an Israelite, which He's not going to be." All right. It says, eleven verse, and Balak said unto Balaam, "What hast thou done unto me?" I took thee to curse mine enemies, and behold, thou hast blessed them all together. All right? Now I'm going to go from here to... You go ahead and read. Deuteronomy 2 and 1. Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord spake unto me, and we compassed Mount Seir many days. And the Lord spake unto me, saying, You have compassed this mountain long enough, turn you northward. 
And command thou the people, saying, You are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed, take good heed unto yourselves, therefore meddle not with them, for I will not give you of their land, no, not so much as a foot breadth, because I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for a possession. Ben, read and break it down. For Come. <laughs> All right, it says, um, Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord spake unto me, and we compassed Mount Seir many days. And the Lord spake unto me, saying, You have compassed this mountain long enough, turn you northward, and command thou the people, saying, You are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourself, therefore. That's right. This is uh, Numbers 24. I can read up uh, 13. I can read up a couple. You know what? No, no, no. Let me go up a couple verses. Okay, it says uh, Numbers 24, verse 10. It said, And Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam. And Balaam was the one that was uh, paid by Balak, king of Moab, to uh, curse Israel. And he smote his hands together, and Balak said unto Balaam, I call thee to curse mine enemies, and behold, thou hast altogether blessed them these three times. 11 verse, therefore now flee thou to thy place. I thought to, to promote thee unto great honor, but lo, Yahweh have kept thee back from honor. And now the word Yahweh there, the, the word Lord there was Yahweh. All right? Um, 12 verse. And Balaam said unto Balak, Speak I not also to thy messengers which thou sentest unto me, saying, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of Yahweh. So let me, let me go. So he knew that the name of the Most High was Yahweh. Because let me, let, me, let me click on that. Yep, the word is Yahweh. So he had to have said it. He knew his name. Um, okay, it says... Uh, it says, I could not go beyond the commandment of Yahweh to do either good or bad of my own mind. But what Yahweh saith, that will I speak. 14. And now, behold, I go unto my people, come hither, and I will advertise thee what this people shall do to thy people in the latter days. In the latter days, it's talking about, it hasn't happened yet. It's getting ready to happen. 15, and he took up this par his parable and said, Balaam, the son, the son of B Beor, have said, and the man whose eyes were, are open have said. What does it mean by his, the man whose eyes were open have said? Who opened his eyes? The Most High. What eyes is it talking about? His spiritual eyes. The Most High gave him a, a, a prophecy of what's going to happen a, a, a couple thousand years, what, almost 3,000 years in the future. Actually, about more than 3,000 years in the future. It says, uh, he have said, which heard the words of the Most High and knew the knowledge of, what? Wait a minute. And knew the knowledge of the Most High. Which saw the vision, the Most High gave him a vision. Remember, he was a heathen. He was of another nation. How do we know that? When you go back to the 23rd chapter, he said, let me die the death of, of the righteous. Let me be like them in the, in, in the latter days. At the end, it said, he hath said, which heard the words of the Most High or the, uh, the gods and knew the knowledge of the Most High which saw the vision of the Almighty, 
Alashadia, falling into a trance but having his eyes open. 17. I shall see him but not now. I shall behold him but, but not nigh, meaning near. Not yet. It's going to be over 3,000 years in the future when this thing is going to come to pass. There shall come a star out of Jacob. That's Yahweh Shai. And it tells you that in uh, Revelation, the 22nd chapter. Somebody want to get that and hold it on deck as well? Revelation, the 22nd chapter. I believe it's in. And a scepter shall rise out of Israel. Shep, scepter meaning rulership. When you have a scepter in your hand, the other people around about you got to bow down to you and worship you. You got that? You got it. My um, man, Alizé? And shall smite the corners of Moab. What does the word, let me look up the word smite. You want me to read the scripture for you? No, hold, hold, hold off on that. I want to look up the word smite. Let me look up the word smite. Okay, smite is from the Hebrew word makataz. Mak Makataza. That's a good name, Makataza. And next brother need a name. Give him the word and the name Makataza. And it means to smite through, shatter, wound severely, to shatter, shattering. Goes on to say, primitive, primitive root, to dash asunder. To crush, like Idak, smash, or violently plunge, figuratively, to subdue or destroy, smite, strike through, wound. So this is what Balaam said, man. And Balaam was nothing but a, another weatherman, just like us. Okay, where am I at? Um... Okay, I'm going to read that again. 17. I shall see him, but not now. But then, but then again, the Mosai turns around when he sees this guy, the righteousness of Cornelius, the Edomite. No, this, I was wrong about these Edomites. Yeah. Which, 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 which says that if that's the case, that means the Mosai ain't perfect. Yeah. That, that means the Mosai's a liar. Yeah. It says, um, 17 verse again, Numbers 24, 17, right? It says, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but, but not nigh, but not near. There shall come a star out of Jacob, which is Yahawashai, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Seth. All right? Seth goes back to the other, the third son of, of, uh, of Adam. So those nations that came at it, at it because the nations came from, a from uh, Adam, then from Seth. That's what the, the line went from Adam to Seth, all right? The sons of, of, of Cain came from Cain, his son Cain. It says, and Edom, shall be a and Edom shall be a possession. Seir also shall be a possession. And Seir is the place where Edom lived. So we're going to possess Edom. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies. And Israel shall do uh, valiantly. 19, out of Jacob shall come he that, ha that shall have dominion, rulership, so you got to worship him, and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. Ultimately, the city is talking about Babylon the Great. And when he looked upon Amalek, he took up, and this is talking about the so-called Jew, because he had Amaleks among Canaan, right? And this is how you know it's talking about uh, this other group of Amalek, Amalek, it says, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he, that he perish forever. What's the only nation that's going to perish forever? Esau. And y'all know who Esau is. It says, and he looked on the Kenites and took up his parable and said, strong is thy dwelling place. And thou put of thy nest in a rock, because before Esau was, was in Mount Seir, you had the, uh, the Horites up there, which were, which were Canaanites. So the first cave dwellers were Canaanites. Uh, 22, nevertheless, the Kenites uh, shall be wasted until Ashur shall, shall carry thee away captive. And he took up his parable and said, alas, 
Who shall live when the Most High doest, doest this? And it says, uh, and ships shall come from the coast of Chittim and shall afflict Ashur and shall afflict Eber and he also shall perish forever. And Balaam rose up and went and returned to his place and Balak also went his way. He's like, when we told him that, you know, he went into detail. He's, he, he got up and walked away. And then this guy got up and walked away. He said, I ain't got nothing to say to this guy no more. You know? Uh, this is Isaiah 33 and 1. Woe to thee that spoilest, and thou was not spoiled. And dealest treacherously, and they dealt not treacherously with thee. When thou shalt cease to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled. And when thou shalt make an end to deal treacherously, they shall deal treacherously with thee. That, that sounds like some root, st root stuff to me. Uh, this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30, and uh, verse uh, 16. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity, and they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. You have something, Apostle Bar? Yeah, um, the book of uh, uh, Ezekiel, the 25th chapter and the 12th verse. Thus saith the Lord, because that Edom have dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance and have greatly offended and revenged himself upon them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord power, I will also, I will also stretch out mine hand upon Edom and will cut off man and beast from it. Ain't no group, no biblical group that you know that comes together and puts up videos talking about how to how to deal with the Israelites. You can't get around these scriptures. Right. You cannot get around these scriptures. Remember, we are just spiritual weathermen. We're just giving you the weather. That's it. So why are you getting mad? You all you got to do is just to accept it. We had to accept it. Because Israel was, was, was jacking up the prophets and killing them, man. That's right. And, 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 and nearly putting, like Jeremiah, they didn't put him to death, but they were, they were, they were attempting to put him to death. He was, he was in a pit, man. And he was prophesying what, what was going to happen to Israel. That's right. And um, they got mad, man. So now, now I can see you Edomites getting mad, but guess what? Just like we had to, oh, Jeremiah 49, you know what I want. Yeah, yeah, okay. Kind, kind. Hey, just like we had to uh, drink of his cup. You got to drink of his cup. It's your turn, my man. You That's got right. to deal with it. Don't get mad at us. We're just spiritual divine weathermen. That's all we are. Yeah. GMS divine weathermen. Yeah, the, forecast is, the forecast is a lot of pain. <laughs> I, I predict pain. <laughs> we predict pain. Pain. <laughs> forecast is a lot of pain. <laughs> Pain will fall like rain. <laughs> That's right. Jer Jeremiah 49 and 12. For thus saith the Lord power, Yahweh Bashem Shai, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken. And that's Israel. All you got to do is go back into history and see what happened to Israel. They said, Surely they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken. So we drink, you know? And art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? So just because you you know you you say you ain't gonna uh, pay, and just because you have these clowns that that call themselves Israelites that say you're not gonna pay, does that mean you're not gonna pay? Yeah, just Look, we drank uh, we drank it to like apostle. No, we drank of the cup. You know, we the most we the apple of the most high's eye. We drank of that cup. Damn it, you gonna drink of it? Yeah, just because some friendly neighborhood Israelite. You know, yep. butted, butted them up. They think that they are going to bypass the judgment. It says, For thus saith the Lord, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken, and art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? Thou shalt not.